everyone, this is Shakira Zohid Gyoku aka comments and welcome back to our last day of Colorful Mirai Spooky Edition. In the last day two, we finished another ending which is uh, Mr. Wizard. We have an ending with Mr. Wizard. You're a wizard, Joseph. We don't get to uh, take any boys back home. But we managed to survive the mission and not getting drifted into getting any shenanigans or any deception or something like that. So that's a win-win. There's a lot of exposition for that too. So good information. Even though we won't be applying that knowledge for the next world. Who knows? But then um, I guess we should try another route. Not exactly routes, but choices that the old lady can have. So the last time we chose to go take a shower, how about we use the tower? Towel this time. Use the towel. So, towel. Yeah, I think just a towel would be enough. I feel less anxious about troubling them too. I don't want to bother you. But I'll be glad to use a towel. No problem. I'll get it for you. Giving me no time to think him, Kubi turns his large back us and quickly runs over the stairs. Slowly, my eyes widened as I watch him jump from the bottom to three steps up, then three more. And before I can blink, he is already at the top. My lips move. Saying silence words of disbelief. I even pointed out at Kubi's feet, but the other two don't show any surprise. They just look at me like nothing about it is strange at all. What the hell? This stair must have at least 20 stops. It would take me forever to get to the top. What is he? A superman? Well, since Kubi is so excited to run and help, we should at least Keep you company until he comes back. Elliot tries to mask his rolling eyes with a gentle smile. Something tells me that Kubi is the energetic kid in this house, and the others are too tired of it. Clearing my throat, I shyly shake my head, turning back to the topic. That would be nice, yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. Then why don't you join us in the living room? Our fireplace will keep you warm for the time being. Uh, they have a fireplace in this house? After all, it's not polite to keep our guests waiting at the door, don't you agree? Uh, yeah, thank you. I can't believe it. I only saw fireplace in movies. I'm so excited. Um, your excitement face is kind of like a scare face though. Then, shall we? Ah, uh, yes, please. God, I hope I don't embarrass myself. Pointing to my right, Alia shows me the way. With him and Milario by my side, I walk nervously to the next room. The first step inside has my jaw dropped. Yes, there is a huge, beautiful, and warm fireplace in the center. A delight to my childish eyes. But that's not all. The room looks incredibly comfy and classic as well. A black leather armchair alongside a gothic sofa is luxuriously positioned close to the fire. Classic paintings on the walls and a large window showing me dead trees bathed by the storm outside. As I step into the Andam's house, it wouldn't be strange for Lutch to come out from the dark and play piano for us at any minute now. What the hell? This place is like a horror museum. Even I'm starting to fall in love with it. Okay. Sure. Not trying to hide my excitement, I dart my eyes from corner to corner. Searching for HMs in the furniture. In the paintings, I find masterpieces I have only seen in pictures. I can't tell if those are replicas or the original piece, but just the thought of being in the same room as it makes me happy. 
Having fun with my curiosity, Elliot and Melario guide me to the large sofa, suggesting I take the seat closest to the fire. Taking a look at the soft material makes me hesitate for a moment. I mean, thinking about wetting such expensive furniture sure feels awful. However, their insistent stares tell me that it would be worse if I refused their hospitality. With no choice, I sit down. It takes me two seconds after it the first contact with the form letter sends my body to heaven. Soon enough, I let go of all my worries and just concentrated on the feeling of my blood running hotter in my veins. Now then, you don't look so worried. Tell me, love, how did you get caught in a storm? Milario's amused voice brings me back to reality. I end up letting my guard down, and now they are laughing at it. Sitting properly, I hold my hands on my lap, feeling Elia's sarcastic smile burning my ears. Um, well, I was on my way to an art exhibition when it started raining. I took this path because a friend said it was a good shortcut. But I end up getting lost, with no shelter to run. But then I saw your house and that's how I ended up here. You really found a house by accident? Yes. Is this so strange? It is indeed. Most people tend to avoid this place. Few are curious enough to try to come in. But no one actually succeeded to do such a thing. What? That's why, of course. It is surprising. You walked in and unintentionally. Yes. Uh, my if I ask why people don't come here? Well, you can say they are afraid of us. I mean, you saw the house outside. Would you come here if you weren't desperate? Ah, uh, right. Honestly, this place looks haunted. Sure it is. Also, it's like a serial killer's hideout, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> There's the serial killers like in front of you, girl. Oh dear. <laughs> hmm. That's very specific, my dear. <laughs> Sorry, but back to the point. It's strange I never heard anything about this place. Or any of you. What a thing. I'm a little hurt to hear it. Uh... Elliot's voice sounds faint, sad, and bitter. Now I regret talking so much. Milario, on the other hand, is smiling. A little too bit... A little bit too happy to hear it. We used to be the talk of the town for years, but I guess time has changed. Maybe they forgot us, Elliot. Is this good at all? I'll say it's not all bad. Hmm. So in the end, you guys were famous. Why didn't you just say it? It's not important. But it'll help help me. Oh, all this talking is making me so depressed. It's hard to leave having no one to visit us. Ah, uh, it's so lonely here, my dear. That's why I beg your forgiveness for our behavior earlier. Um, you have a lot of people around here, you know. What do you mean? We were just overjoyed to see someone new. Oh, how long has it been since you received visitors? Long enough to forget how to act around such a beautiful lady. Uh. Indeed, you are certainly a feast to the eye, my dear. 
Dang, you two are smooth. The smooth combo, I say. It's refreshing to have you here. Thanks. I beg your pardon if I'm being too selfish now, but I hope this storm doesn't stop so soon. My face burns stronger than the wood and the fireplace. I have never received so much flattery before. I'm sure this is bad for my heart. Swimming against my will to not drown in their sweet words, I run my eyes through the room. There must be something somewhere to help me change the topic. Otherwise, I'll melt away before I can get out of here. Did we embarrass you? I'm sorry, I simply thought you were used to having men over you. What? No one. Here's the opposite, actually. Crystal. <laughs> Don't tell me you never had anyone falling for you. That's maybe. Hmm. Please don't look at me like I'm a loser. Oh no, I'm just surprised that I'll be your first one. Ah, uh, oh, oh, that much, that much is really strong over here. Huh. This guy. I need to stay away from him, for my heart's sake. Apologies for teasing you. It was just hard to resist. But now I see you are feeling relaxed. Not worried about ghosts anymore, I assume. Ah, uh, yes. That's excellent. Then how about you join me for a cup of tea? What? No, I'm fine, really. You are already doing so much for me, Elliot, and I don't mind doing more. To be honest, you just arrived at our afternoon tea break. Don't you think it would be a shame if you didn't join that as well? Oh, I see. I'm sure it would be great to help in your current condition. Hmm, that's true. I have to disagree with it, Elliot. Hmm. See, my love, Elliot is kind of a teenard. Going with him will bore you to hell. Eh, how bold of you. Besides, I think his tastes are questionable. I would call it refined. After all, I only drink the bitterness of flavor. Oh, um, oh, okay, oh no. And straight from the source, huh? Huh. Hmm. Standing in front of me, I watch as they exchange deadly stares with a smile hanging on their lips. It's nice to be the main attraction, but this competition for my attention is a little bit awkward. If I don't say something, I feel they'll start to throw lasers at each other. And what else can I say to stop them? Tea would be good, especially if they have some honey. But Elliot is a little too much. I don't know if I'll be fine with him. Uh, I think tea would be nice. Of course, you can follow me too. Then bring it here, Elliot. What? What? The tea. Bring it to her. After all, it would be bad if Kubi came back here and Lauren was nowhere to be found, right? What do you mean nowhere? Isn't it in the next room? Oh. I'm not sure if uh, Milorio is helping out of goodness of his heart, which is potentially not. He just have other ulterior, ulterior motive, so uh, it's indirectly helping us, in a sense. Is this mansion that big that I can get lost? I'm sure I can find her a nice towel in the kitchen. Again, they stare at each other, but this time it only lasts a few seconds. Quickly, really, they turn to me. Surprised, I hold myself still in the couch. Those drumming spots on the face look suspicious and scary. What is it? 
How silly. We are talking so much that we forgot to ask you about it. Say, my dear, would you like to follow me to the kitchen? Or would you rather stay here, nice and cozy with me while waiting for Gooby? I. Oh, that's a that's a good question. A good question. Following Elliot is potentially reached to our bad end, but saying we win my L'Oreal is um also have uh, other consequences. Who knows? Well, I'm a sucker for Elliot right now, so let's just be dumb. Well, um, we're heading to the bad end. <laughs> Milorio is trying too hard to make me stay here, suspiciously. I don't know if I can trust myself along with him, but going with Elliot also means that I'll turn Kubi down, which doesn't sound fair, especially after seeing him so excited to help me. It makes me a little sad, but maybe I can explain it to him later. I think he'll understand my reasons for drinking tea in this condition. Facing my clothes, I stand up, surprising them both. I would love to accompany you, Elliot. What a delight! Hmm. Oh uh ho! -huh. Don't be so sad, Melorio. You just have to try harder next time. Hmm. Well, I guess my charms weren't enough. Not just that. You are being too pushy. Don't worry, love. Next time you will come to me. Uh, he is really strange. Do you know something that I don't know? Do you know the forward? Feeling a hint of bitterness in his words, I take a step closer to Elliot. With no further ado, we walk towards the next room, leaving Melorio biting his lips angrily behind. Our footsteps echo on the kitchen's wooden floor. To my surprise, the place is quite small, but it still gives the same aesthetic as the other rooms I saw. It looks also really nice too. The beautiful black table with three seats of the same collection in the center is the main attraction of the room. There is also a large counter, mirrors, and cupboards on the sides. The stove in the fair corner looks old. Really old. That's aesthetic, I guess. Elliot walks past me while I'm stunned by such a movie-like place. Have a seat, Lauren. I'll repair the tea for us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. But tell me, what is your favorite? Oh, I don't really have a favorite. Usually, I buy the random flavors at vending machines. Hmm. Really? Yes. I'm more of a coffee person. Oh. Is this a problem? I can offer you something else if you wish. Oh no! Please don't be too trouble with me. I love to taste your tea. I mean, I never drank proper tea, so that's why I don't like it. But I'm open to trying new stuff. Oh, that's good to hear. In this case, let me surprise you with my favorite. I'm sure it'll change your mind. Thank you. I look forward to it. As I sit down, Elliot turns his back to me and slowly walks to the counter. For some reason. Every move he makes gets me hypnotized by his beauty and elegance. Enchanted, I watch him take the ingredients from a shelf and set everything in order in front of him. Elliot's face holds a peaceful smile, pleased with himself. He really is a tea lover. Forgive me if I'm too curious, but I can't stop thinking about your outfits. Ah. Uh is this your everyday clothing? Do you enjoy this style? Uh, no. Actually, this is the dress code for the exhibition I talked about before. Oh, I didn't know such a thing existed. Yeah, 
My friend is into performance and stuff, so they wanted us to dress according to the art team today. An obscure team, I assume. Something like that, yeah. Danny is interested in realistic painting, but this time they decided to do something different. The beast in human hearts is the team. Dark description of sins and passion. Something that really took me in awe. The first time I saw the sketches, I almost cried. Danny is such an amazing artist. I'm so proud of them. I hear Elia stop Jacko's cutting my thoughts and calling my attention back to him. What? I think it's funny. Don't you think it is such a convenient coincidence that you walked into our house, dressed just like us? More like me, to be honest. Now that you mentioned it, it is, heh. I almost look like a part of this place. Indeed. And you'll be. Oh um, no! Oh, oh no! Eh? Did you say something? Not at all. Laughing at it, Elia turns back to the counter. He takes the hot kettle and slowly pours the water. I feel calmer, like I'm already home, getting cozy under my sheets. <laughs> the smell isn't strong, but surely it's warm. Not knowing what flavor it is sparks my curiosity. I hear the bustling clink, and I know he has finished. Sitting back properly, I wait for Elia to turn in my direction with two cups in his hands. Coming in my direction, he set the cups on the table. With the same smiling face from before, he pulls the chair, sitting close to me. He leans over his elbows and rests his chin on his hands, staring at my face. My cheeks turn into a tomato with a lack of space. Elliot, however, doesn't mind or doesn't care at all about it. Trying to avert my embarrassed face, I look down at the table. The white porcelain teacup is waiting in front of me. The orange liquid shows my nervous reflection in waves of warmth. I take a deep breath to calm down, feeling the soft smell going up my nostrils. With the cup close to my face, I let myself drown in his warmth, taking the cold away. Timidly, I take a sip. I thought I would burn my tongue, but surprisingly, the tea is perfect to drink. The taste is light and sweet. A lot better than the industrial stuff I drink every day. How is it? It's really good. I never thought tea would taste like this. I'm glad, my dear. I don't know what I'll do if I ruin your first chance to enjoy it. <laughs> you are too kind, Elliot. I saw his face uh, up close right now. It's like even closer than before. It's super pretty. I love it. Okay, back. Hmm. It's just natural. You are my guest, after all. I take another sip. His voice mouths the words in sweet tones. It's pleasing to hear him talking. I take a glance at his cup and realize Elia didn't touch it but is happily playing with the cup sliding his finger around the border. Swallowing her, I take a look at his face. Now that I'm close, I can see how pale he looks, but what worries me are his fans. It's sharp and long. I know I shouldn't judge people, but this is a little too much from gothic enthusiasts. Noticing my long stare, Elliot looks at me. Embarrassed, I look away. Taking a long drink to mask my reaction. Oh, my dear, you are so sweet. What? So naive and beautiful. Such a beautiful girl. Uh, it's been so hard for me to find people like you. What are you saying? I'm sure there are a ton of people making stupid choices around here. I can't be the only one. You are unique, my dear. I'm sure of it. Uh, 
Should I take it as a compliment? And I just can't help but think that you'll be a perfect piece of art. Um, red flag, red flag! Can you imagine it? Being forever this young, forever beautiful. That's tempting. Taking my words at permission to come closer, Elia pushes his cup aside and rests his hand on my chair's back. I shrink as I feel his fingertips touching my shoulders. You could be a masterpiece. My masterpiece. What? What do you say, my dear? You wouldn't have to go back to your boring human life. You could just live in this house and draw on yourself in sins but no guilt. Forever. Ah, uh, you are joking, right? Of course not. Eh? The conversation takes a sudden upturn. What doesn't sound bad to him is enough to drive me away. His voice becomes exciting, planning a whole story for us while I'm still trying to figure out if he's a joke or not. Watching my uncomfortable reaction, Elliot laughs as if he has reached his goals in this conversation. Putting my cup on the table, I force a polite smile and carefully stand up. Ah, uh, that would be too much. Too weird, maybe. I mean, I just met you. And I already know you are the one. Ah, uh, you know. You sound like you are going to lock me inside this house. Um, that is um, a very, 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 very high potential that is happening right now. I think your words are too harsh, but the idea isn't wrong. What? Forgive me, Lauren, but now that I have met you, my darling, I just can't let you go. Yep, she is drug. I don't want to be lonely anymore. And you are just perfect to me. Don't you agree? Um... What? What's wrong, my dear? You look confused. I... yeah, I'm kinda dizzy. Besides all the weird stuff Elliot is saying, there's another thing happening. My vision is blurry and my body feels numb. I look to my hands to find my fingers slightly shaking. I don't understand where this is coming from until I see the cups on the table hit the corner of my eyes. Elliot hasn't drunk a single sup of his tea, but me, on the other hand, drank to his last drop. What's happening to me? Did you drug me? He smiles at my accusations, ignoring my shoutings as if I have no way out now. Scared, I take a fumbling step back. If I can reach the entrance, I can try to call for help. But who is going to help me? If the others buy me, won't it be worse? I tell myself I need to try anyway, and if I can at least throw something at him, maybe I can gain some time. I look around, but my eyes don't help me. I'm feeling sick. My toes are loose and drag, and my legs won't hold me still for too long. I need to. I have to run. It's been hundreds of years since I've seen a human so close. I struggle to stay upright. His voice is vicious and bizarre. And now you are here. Real, alive. And oh, so beautiful. I still force my feet to move, and as expected, my legs give out. I'm falling, but before I can hit the floor, I feel strong arms wrap around my waist. Yep, has that changed color? Hey. I look up, my heart stops. Blood red eyes stare at me excited from above. The sharp fans blow hungrily. My heart is bowing painfully, and my mind is crying for help. My limbs are melting in his hands as my eyes fight to keep open. 
No way. You really are Dracula. I would say I'm more of a distant cousin of his. With a happy chuckle, Elliot moves closer to my face. I feel his cold breath smelling my skin like a hungry animal checking its meal. Yep, uh, rape, I guess. <laughs> rape indeed. His long fingers run under my collar, and delicately he pulls it away. I don't hear the faint sound of the glow dropping to the floor, but I feel the air hitting my exposed skin, counting out the time before my end. His arms wrap around my waist like a rope to keep me motionless. His eyes watch me with perversion and desire. Elliot's breathing is quickly loosened space, hitting my skin and making me shiver in fear. My eyes stare at the ceiling, unable to figure out what I see. The drug is acting fast to turn my body into liquid. I can't think. Now I can only feel every nerve under my skin trembling in expectation. Please. I beg, hearing my voice sounding so weak. So sorry. I don't want to die. Oh, don't worry. You were not. This wet tongue turns on his teeth eagerly. My throat burns in despair. Life will be long for both of us, my darling. I can feel my veins pulsing as his face comes closer to my neck. Oh, there's a mirror. Oh, 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 I, I, I spot that, I spot that. So, uh, you can see on the back. There's only the um, reflection of Lauren, but uh, Elliot is nowhere to be seen, which is sister uh, kind of rumor information about uh, vampires doesn't have reflection in mirrors. Yeah. Hush, my dear. Just let yourself drown in my sins. His love softly kissed my skin. My vision darkens, and seconds later, I feel a sharp pain penetrate in my neck. His pants come in last night, tearing through my skin. I try to push him away, but my hands can only clench to his clothes, begging it to stop. Suddenly, I hear a loud noise. The pressure on my neck eases as Elliot pulls away without a care. Hmm. Looks like you so fixed it. How disappointed. I was looking forward to having you for me. But it seems that our story will have to wait. I bid you farewell, my dear. For now, at least. Um, maybe no? The stop echoes in my mind at, uh, the stop echoes in my mind as I am finally blackout. Slowly, I open my eyes. Fuzzy images appear in the dark, spinning my mind around the room. Yes, think it to yourself for the, the saving. I sit up, feeling my body aching as if I had been hit by something strong. What the hell? Having no idea where I am or why I'm feeling so sore, I take a look around the room. Apparently, I'm in a long forgotten kitchen. The place is rotting away. How did I? Oh, hmm? Her memories erased too? Wow. I'm pretty sure the last time uh, on Joseph's route, we actually remembered. This time we forgot. I guess, um, um, the last time we, we developed it, a bond with yourself, so, yeah, it's strong enough for her memory to retain her. Huh? Wait. Blood red eyes flash behind my eyes before I can ask the silence for help. Memory surfaces from the fog. My heart races in fear, and I quickly push myself to the side, trying to hide under the broken furniture. Or that, she just temporarily forgot. Now she remembered. I wait for the sign of the man from before, for any signs. However, all I get is the silence of an abandoned house as her answer. 
Swallowing my breath, I peek at the room. This is not the same place. This is an old version of that mansion. What there? Slipping away from under the table, I whisper my depths. The birds outside answer me in trouble. The storm is gone just like the residents of the mansion. There's no sign of life in this house. It's like I walked out of a dream. This can't be. They were too real. But, yeah, I mean, vampires aren't real. Uh, maybe I had a fever or something and dreamed about it all. I don't know. My brain is just too messed up. Shaking my head, I rub my clothes, cleaning the dirt from the floor. I don't want to think about it anymore. I just want to leave this place. Keeping all the scary ideas out of my mind, I head towards the exit. It takes me two steps to start feeling a strange twinge in my neck. Oh, did he manage to bite? Ouch! Did I hit my neck somewhere? Instinctively, I run a hand over the place. Carefully, I press my fingertips on the area. My blood turns cold when I feel two deep cuts. Yeah, he managed to bite. Ah, uh, no way. I spin on my feet. My eyes ran every single corner in search of something I didn't know. That guy. Uh, does it mean I'm a vampire now? It can't be. Shocked by my assumptions, I ran to the entrance door. In front of me, the gap from before is showing the sunlight of a beautiful afternoon. Normally, I'll be happy to see the light, but right now, I'm holding my heart in my hands, fearing for my future. Okay, no panic. I'm just checking. Doesn't mean it's real. Uh, I just need to know. Will I burn or will I shatter a diamond? <laughs> oh my Reference to Twilight? Is it reference to Twilight? I'm telling you right here. <laughs> <clears throat> Next. Closing my eyes, I reach my hand to the light. Part of me says it's stupid, but the other part is already embracing impact. To both sides, disappointment, nothing happens. It's just hot, like always. Uh, so no crucible powers? Uh, honestly, with my luck, I may get a disease or something long from it. Touching the marks on my neck again, I take a look at the silenced house. Did it really happen? Uh, do I want to know the answer? Feeling haunted and uneasy about it all, I take a step outside. I don't think I'm ready to know the truth. And definitely, I don't want to meet Elliot again, despite how beautiful he is. Ah, uh, this will get me trouble through sleeping. Sleeping tonight. <clears throat> this will get me trouble sleeping tonight. Elliot, vampires, haunted mansion. This all sounds like a fairy tale to me. Something that usually doesn't happen in my life. Be this true or not, this definitely will be a memory I won't forget so soon. But now I still have an exhibition to attend. And that's all that really matters to me. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, I have to um, manually click that before the uh, red is started to roll, huh? Okay.
Oh, you are finally awake. Hello there, my dear. Did how did you enjoy all the time? It, it, it was really heart pounding, I guess. <laughs> Don't worry. You are not going to turn into a bat, but I'm sure you have more questions about the sounds. Why don't you come back one more time and try to figure out the answers for yourself? I'd love to see you again, and maybe this time I can make sure you stay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Afternoon tea. All right. So that should be a good time to pause for a playthrough of Colorful Mira Spooky Edition. We got another ending, and this time it's afternoon tea time with Elliot. It's a heart bounding experience of tea time where we get drugged, get bitten. I think their um, their ladies became a vampire, but this vampire doesn't get affected by the sun or anything. She feels completely normal. I'm not sure if she gets any superpower or not, but for now she can live a normal life, I guess. I wonder if she can change uh, eye color like red, or like Elia did earlier, or something else. She escaped the fate of being a vampire bride. Not sure if it's bride or uh, being sired by a vampire. Not sure what that means in this um, universe, but she escaped. She's not trapped, so that's good. Thank you, Chisa, for the team for uh, saving us. Even though this time, um, definitely Lauren didn't know about uh, the robber saving. The, well, not really not. Well, it's an experience nonetheless. The, I, I can say the, what I enjoy most about this ending is that I can see uh, Elia's beautiful face up very close, very nice. But that's, uh, that's just all. <laughs> that's just all. I just, beautiful face. Very good. Very good food. Yum, yum. That should be it for now. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next playthrough of Colorful Mirai Spooky Edition. Bye bye!